goes to. I first heard about chemtrails many decades ago when I was researching an article on the 25th anniversary of the JFK assassination. Chemtrails were supposedly being sprayed by planes and people nearby were having funny feelings in their throats shortly afterward. Cases of flu and other illnesses were supposedly spiking in those areas that had been chemtrailed. Although the appeal of this story has faded considerably through the years, at one time chemtrails was the spear point of an emerging tinfoil hat patrol, a misdirection propaganda campaign likely orchestrated by the CIA. Being an investigative researcher, I looked into the subject and discovered the white plumes left by airplanes were contrails, little more than water vapor. Jets like cars do emit some toxic exhaust, but that is mostly invisible. I watched in horror as no amount of science nor common sense slowed the rise of the chemtrail cottage industry. Google Chemtrail and you'll find 4.5 million links devoted to discussing the topic, along with thousands of fake photos and other phony evidence. Who could have engineered this massive disinfo dump? In the early days, chemtrails were mostly exclusively promoted by late night radio host Art Bell, who was also very involved in promoting UFOs. It might be educational to note that after 9-11, Bell ridiculed the idea our government might be lying about the tragedy. He spent considerable effort promoting the wackiest of conspiracy theories, but when it came to actual real hardcore research on conspiracies, Bell was nowhere to be found. When I ridiculed Bell's chemtrail hoax, it's important to note I did not deny chemicals are sometimes sprayed on people, plants, and clouds. When done on plants, it's called crop dusting, and you'll notice a crop dusters are small, slow propeller planes that fly close to the ground while spraying because chemical sprays are expensive and depending on wind speeds on the ground and at flight altitude, unwanted drift can occur away from the target area. When done on people, it's called chemical warfare and outlawed by a 1997 United Nations treaty ratified by 65 nations. For cloud seeding, small planes are also the norm. Cloud seeding is usually done with silver iodine, dry ice and or liquid nitrogen, although the Russians apparently include cement fragments in their mix. However, the chemtrail cottage industry claimed hundreds of flights were taking place daily with both commercial and military aircraft, all of which were seeding toxic chemicals for the purpose of creating a mass extermination. The biggest problem with this theory is over the decades, not a single shred of evidence was ever produced to support this sort of conspiracy and zero dead bodies. Think about it. We're talking about tons of toxic chemicals secretly loaded onto planes, all of which were secretly refitted to spray chemicals for the purpose of mass murder. And this went on for over 30 years. Just consider the number of people involved, chemical manufacturers, transporters, mechanics, pilots, any one of whom had the capability of initiating a billion dollar class action suit. Such a person would have become the most famous whistleblower in history, but in 30 years of chemtrail induced hysteria, only a tatty parade of phonies has appeared. Mind control is based on manufacturing fear. Turning harmless contrails into deadly chemtrails is modus operandi for the CIA's tinfoil hat patrol. Many chemtrail sites soon dovetailed into the wackiest of 9-11 truth sites, thus making it easier to swat down authentic 9-11 research by drowning it with gunk. The real research tells us 9-11 was most likely planned and executed by a cabal, including high-ranking members of the Pentagon, MI6, Mossad, ISI, and Saudi intelligence. When social media took off, a huge network shared obviously photoshopped chemtrail photos, and thousands were hoodwinked into believing these doctored images were real evidence. This op left traceable tracks. Today, the phony QAnon crowd has taken over the tinfoil hat patrol, but the techniques are unchanged and only capable of capturing the minds of the dumbest among us. Goebbels used to say something along the lines of, if you're going to tell a lie, make it a whopper and just stick to it. As long as your allies own the TV stations and newspapers, you can keep the most outrageous hoodwinks alive. But not forever, which is why I keep hope alive that someday this facade will crumble and the media will finally admit that the CIA killed JFK and begin agitating for a real investigation into 9-11 because some of the same players might have been involved.